frustration, I guess, Steve, because was that a point gained or two points lost, really? I mean, I, look, our objective for this week was to, there's six points to play for and we wanted to take all six of them. Um, as it was, look, if we're not able to score, then we're not going to win the game. So if it's not going to be your night in front of goal, then the absolute best you can hope for is, is a point. Don't lose your away games particularly. So yeah, I'm, I'm happier to be sitting here with a point than nothing, that's for sure. Yeah, because it's strange, you were missing Jack. Well, uh, and Bill, but the start of the level looked like a strong side, didn't it? I mean, starting to get, starting to get bodies back. Obviously, Luke Leppard was back uh, first time he's been involved since the Vars game, um, so that was good. Um, yeah, we were actually hoping Baldwin was going to be with us, but the work-related thing kept kept him out. But hopefully, he'll be involved on Saturday. So Rory served his suspension last night, so he, he's now back available. Mm. Yeah, and, and Bill was obviously there watching. I'm sure you guys saw him. And um, I think he's about two weeks away, realistically. Yeah. So that's good news. George Bentley uh, played for the 23s on Monday. Got through that well. So yeah, we, we're getting somewhere near full strength, which is promising, encouraging. Yeah, because that short through the game was obviously, it was a bit of a strange one. We started both halves really well, then sort of faded, and then there was the end of each half, we had chances where we could have turned it round again. It was a really strange game. Quite a topsy-turvy game. Um, VCD more than played their part. I felt they caused us quite a few problems. And, um, you know, I, I think it's really hard. You know, you look at the league and you look at the league positions and it's really misleading sometimes. I mean, I'll, I'll be surprised if they're in a relegation scrap, from what I saw yeah. of them last night, I thought they tried to play good football. Um, they they looked like they had some, they looked like they had some quite well established movement and rotations in midfield. And yeah, do, do, do you know what? Yeah. They they gave us a couple of scares. Truth be yeah. told, so yeah, we we thought that position is a bit misleading because, like I said, we we talked about that. The draw eight games, mm. and it just looked like go forward they were good, but they were vulnerable at the back. And maybe we could have sort of take advantage of that more, I don't know. I think <coughs> if we're keeping a clean sheet, then defensively we yeah. cannot do any more. So then you're looking at can we score a goal quite clearly. And and I think we had enough chances yeah. to score. So yeah, you know, normally across the course of a season we back our attackers to open up a defence. But yeah, but but last night Maybe a little bit of lack of quality. Maybe, maybe, maybe BCD got to take some credit as well. Uh, did their keeper make any great saves? No, he probably didn't actually. It was more wayward shooting from us, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was quite a bit of that. But I mean, a more positive side, I guess. Okay, they were still making the odd error. But I thought collectively the defence very well. We individually both from a game, you know. Both of those full backs seem to work well for us. Um, and then you've got, uh, you know, one who was failing, obviously, in general. Dan T came on and did exactly what Dan T does, just yeah. stop anything. And then you've got your two centre backs. I mean, Jim and Sinji are becoming a really good partnership now. And, I mean, Sinji, again, just continues to grow with every game. Physically. I mean, <laughs> physically, it's, it does seem like it. Yeah. Because that, and it's not just midfield, it's like Luke, what you said about Luke coming back. The number of times I had the Sidji or Luke appear from when they were attacking it in, in our, our defence, those two just appear from nowhere like a torpedo and completely took the ball fairly and had the ball flying out or coming away with it every single time. I thought both of those did that really well. Yeah, I mean, they're both superb at making those recovery tackles. I guess in a perfect world, if we get our positioning right in the first place, they haven't got to do so much of that. And we did get caught a few times um, where we were actually trying to play out. We didn't quite get it right. And, and I think actually a couple of VCD's better opportunities were then pouncing on us making a mistake in possession, which you're right, a couple of times Luke or Sidge or Jim White made one fantastic tackle inside our own 18-yard box. Um, 
and and that's that's the art of you know that is part yeah. of the art of good defending. Although ideally, you get your shape, you get your positioning right, and you don't have to throw yourself at too much. And the new thing about good defending is, actually, last night they had plenty of crosses, mm. which is where we've been vulnerable. I mean, every time we got near the old box, I think we were all going to tense up and think, oh shit, there's going to be a cross coming in here. Yeah. yeah. But we dealt with every single time, which is that's a massive improvement on where we were. There's definitely a massive improvement. Statistics back that up. I mean, that's back-to-back -back clean sheets. Um, only one goal let in in the last three games. I think we only let in six goals in the last eight games. So yeah. there is a significant improvement. And that does come from a bit of familiarity. We've been a bit more settled with personnel. Um, we've worked on it to the best of our time that we have. So you get that little bit of cohesive understanding. So that has improved. Obviously, what we really need now is to get back to the kind of free yeah. scoring that we were seeing a little bit earlier in the season. Yeah. And uh, it's not that we've compensated. We haven't put the attackers on a leash and, and said, you've got to get back and defend. That That isn't the reason. They've still got exactly the same creative freedom as they've always had. It just, just for whatever reason, the goals have dried up a little bit, which is... Yeah, I think uh, maybe it's that's because we're missing Bill, because Bill was getting so many goals. Was yeah, it? Bill was second, Bill was out scoring second top goal scorer. Yeah, yeah, sec yeah, at one point he was on a he was a top scorer and, and yeah, massive attacking player to be missing. Um so yeah, you know, that that's been a painful one. That was um I don't think he's played since was it the Vars? Against Lingfield or it was the Glebe, no, it was, it was the Glebe, the Glebe defeat, the three-two defeat to Glebe. I think is the last time Bill plays. I think that's six or seven games ago now. Yeah. So yeah, that that, that hurts us a little bit. Yeah, it does. But you know, don't worry. Um, but I mean, it was also you were good at the back. But like you said, that, that going forward, we weren't as as clinical as we were because we, like I say, we struggled getting it out wide. But if we did get it out wide, and then the ball came in. We weren't able to finish it. Yeah. Or we, or the, or the delivery wasn't good enough. We just couldn't get that final third clicking. There was a bit of both of those scenarios, wasn't there? There was, there was, there was, some, yeah. there was some wayward shooting. There was a couple of crosses didn't beat the first man. A couple that looped over everybody. You know, we had chances to win that game at the end. Definitely. I mean, it, yeah. it, it, it was a topsy. The thing is, you look through most of not just BCD's results, but our results. In fact, most of the results in the whole league, eighty percent of the games are very tight. Yeah. And you know, you look at our last, look at our last three results. There's been a one nil against us, a one nil in our favour, and a nil nil. And, and and ultimately, you know, we beat Snodden one nil, rightly so. We we, we take the plaudits. We should have been really happy. With the just our goal against Clean, you know, it's. it's and um, that five margin yeah do you know what I mean we're, and in Punjab we're getting called the worst display in years and, and, and it's one kick of the ball and, yeah. and last night you know we come away a little bit flat the VCD manager I spoke to him afterwards and, and he was a bit flat because he felt he could have won it and again either one of our players manages to put the ball in the net and, and suddenly we're up here yeah. instead of but instead then, of here and, and, and that's what the, the, and then the opposite of that is we could have easily lost that game and we didn't. So, Agreed. you know, you take that from it. Agreed. Because it wasn't a poor performance at all. I wouldn't say it poorly. You can't, can't, it was an okay performance. We just, just couldn't finish. I think from our point of view, the surface was immaculate. So, it, you know, from our attacking point of view particularly, we thought that, that the odds were in their favour, you know, Festos, Regan, Ash. Yeah. If, if ever there's going to be a pitch that's made for them, it was there. They'll probably say, yeah, but you still won't get the ball to us in good areas. Maybe we struggled a little bit. Um, but I still feel there was four to five, particularly if you include Trev's marginal offside disallowed goal, there was four or five good chances. Yeah. And I think if you've managed to shut out the other team, whether that's by luck or judgment or a bit of both, you need someone to take one of them chances. Yeah, well, like I say, you've got some people coming back who's going to help. That's going to help. Gives us a little bit more yeah. depth. You know, the squad last night was good, but obviously if we've got everyone available, it's yeah. going to be a little bit more option on the bench as well. well but that's not knocking anyone that's involved. Well, exactly. exactly. What we're saying is, for instance, we missed Bill doing that linking up bit in the gap yeah. in between Trevor and the 
So that makes Trevor a little bit more isolated. True. And you know, the whole thing looks insane. Yeah, and Rory, Rory's Rory. probably been one of our better ball carriers in yeah. the last two or three games. Him not being there didn't help. You know, the, all the all the guys play a part, and that's not knocking anybody that yeah. was there, because likewise they play their part. But, you know, obviously any any team, any workforce, any group would want to be the strongest they can be. Mm-hmm. That's, that's the way it is, isn't it? Well, yeah. you took my idea when people were in that is, Take Peter Beasley out of Newcastle or England and suddenly Shearer doesn't get half as many goals as Newcastle, Lineker doesn't get any goals for England, do you know what I mean? It's that, if you take that out, it's going to happen. Yeah, I mean... And that's not just people coming in, that's just the way it is. Some of these link-ups, some of these combinations, some of these partnerships just work, don't they? Maybe that's because yeah. of game time together. And I, and I suppose Bill and Trev have probably got the most game time together out of any of our forwards because they've been at the club the longest. And scored the goals. And, and when um, you miss and build, those goals are going to Yeah, so, so that's the partnership that's tried mm. and tested and, and works. And to not have it, again, it's, it's not knocking anyone. I mean, Festos stepped up against Snodland. Yeah. Um, Alpha stepped up against Glee. You know, so it's, it's, it's not like we're solely reliant on those guys, but that partnership has been quite fruitful for yeah. us across two seasons. Well, I say hopefully a couple of weeks and pull us back. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. Because... Yeah, so, so just wrapping up again, we it's Kennington next. And this is another one where you look at paper and think, ah, we're going to cruise this. We're going to win it easily. Look where they put in. But there's a big but that goes with that, isn't it? Because Definitely. Because, you know, there's nobody, there aren't any easy games of ECD. You, you cannot afford to be arrogant or complacent in this league. We haven't got any right to be. No one's got any right to be. Kennington beat Whitstable last night. They... Um, they, they, they've been on some fine margins. They've had a couple of very close games with Snodland back to back. And let's be honest, uh, we played them in the Vars earlier in the season. We beat them 3 2. But if, if, if I recall it right, they, they had us on the back foot towards the end of that game. And um, as I say, they're close games, always close games. And um, all the time games are close. You just got to rope. Sometimes the luck falls your way. Yeah. I don't want to make it all about luck, but yeah, well, I think you referees' decisions, a player making a bad mistake. You know, everyone at step five's got a mistake in them. Everyone at step five's got some worldy yeah. in them, and, and 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 sometimes that's going to be the difference. Well, that's what Kenny and Chris. We haven't got any mistakes in us, but we have got a few worldies. Well, look, the boys are hungry. Like, yeah. like I said, we we set out for six points this week. Four's now the maximum, so we'll be gunning for that. But we certainly won't be complacent or arrogant. They've got some good players. Obviously, Tom Scorer is someone that stands out for me. Um, always always cause problems. So, 100% not taking them for granted at all. Brilliant. Well, thanks a lot. And good luck. Thank you.